So in Star Citizen, there's a lot of cool places to visit, but traveling between those places in space and such, uh, maybe it gets a little bit flat and boring, uh, and maybe that's what it's like in real life, but we want to make a really, really cool experience here, and I think we can make it look a lot nicer through spacecaping. So this is a child gas cloud. Um, this one spawns with some asteroids, and this is basically one of the ways we're going to add depth to different locations in Stanton. The way these are created are through a process in Houdini that I've been using. And basically I can just try and make a, a simulation, uh, play around with it, try and see what looks nice. Um, and then I'll try and bring it into engine. Once it's an engine, then I can start lighting the sky up and, and, and creating uh, some interesting areas all around it. The reasons why there are some dark areas and some lighter areas of this gas cloud is because it's gas particles, right? So the hotter or maybe more intense gas will light up a little bit more and the darker gas will be just pretty much give some shadows and, uh, and occlusion around here. So the red stuff that you can probably see along the outskirts here, it's, it's the new space dust and it's pretty much being lit up by a light leak color that comes from the properties of the gas cloud. And so the sun will pierce light through the cloud and then it'll tint it a specific color. So that's what it's doing to the particles right now as I'm moving towards it. But we can see it a little bit more obviously if we zoom into an asteroid here, it has this little bit of a red tint on it because the gas cloud starts as generally a bluish color, light bluish but it has a, a light leak color uh, that is orange. And so when the light pierces through it, it gets more and more of that tint added onto the objects around it. So this is one of the gas cloud childs that we have right now. Um, but if there's a child, there must always be a parent. So if we zoom out and we'll speed up a lot here, this is its parent. And this guy is quite massive. So it has several children within it. So I know where a second one is here. So here's another child on the opposite side of the cloud. It's a very similar scale to the one we were just at. And it gives you a very similar amount of depth and feel, but it's lit in a completely different way. Maybe it looks a little bit more aggressive and it, uh, it gives off a, of a, a cool feel like that. So with play spaces, generally you'll spend most of your time in these uh, child VDBs um, and then you'll do your quantum traveling or even uh, flying at NCM speeds from one to another. But something like this would be a quantum travel to your other child or multiple other children. Um, and so I really wanted to at least test here in this setup what I've got here and see if uh, quantum traveling through this uh, really nice, uh, maybe angelic, bright area would be, a, would be an interesting feat. So throughout this, I've been moving very, very fast, uh, probably f faster than what you can quantum travel at. Um, so it is generally really hard to, to tell what scale we're at right now. But if I go down to this guy, this little child here, and you can see your asteroids, you can see the whole thing, but maybe what we can do is turn on some planets for scale. So right here, this is a sphere, the scale of yellow. So it's, it's really, it's really, it's, it's very close uh, to the scale of a, of a moon here, this child itself, but we can scale up a little bit. Here's the size of Hurston, slightly bigger, not too bad. And here's the size of Crusader. And we have that compared to the parent. The parent is even larger than that. So I think there's a lot of space uh, that we can use around here to add extra, extra little depths, li little children. <laughs> even though that sounds funny to say, little child gas clouds all around the parent here. Uh, and it can hold them as a home. As work continues adapting the gas cloud tech created for Squadron 42 to use throughout Stanton and beyond, the actor feature team is busy adding further iteration on features like force reactions, 
which not only aim to provide a realistic and visceral sense to being hit by just about anything in the Star Citizen universe, but also give reason to all those seats in the bellies of dropships when exterior forces begin transferring to those within. So force reactions uh, this time around, we're just adding a little more layers to the uh, the game. It's going to give you more immersion. I think it's if it's just adding to what what Star Citizen is. So the big additions on on 311 is the knockdown and seeing the reactions in the ship. When you work on any feature, you need you need a good uh, testing ground, like something a little bit simpler where where there's n less noise than say, loading into the full PU experience every time. Uh, but it also allows us to really dial in on all the different edge cases, all the different scenarios. So with forced reactions, uh, we've got Sam, and Sam's really sort of taken the whole uh, test level to heart and, and built like an amusement park of different rides you can go on to test all the different forced reactions uh, aspects. And this is great because it allows you know it allows you to have tons of fun first of all and yeah you know, if you have fun when you make a feature it's gonna be a better feature. Hello, I am Samuel Joyce. I'm a technical designer on Star Citizen. So let me jump into the editor and show you what that's all about. One of the force reactions that we're working on is called Twitch, where the player will be hit by a bullet and their body will react in a certain way, depending on how far away they are being shot and how far they are depends on how strong the, the impact will be. So when you're being hit by a automatic weapon, you'll really feel that impact. Similarly, if you're, you're being shot by a rifle, the rifles generate a lot more impact, which means that you're gonna get a much more severe reaction. When you get hit by a shotgun from far away, you'll get you'll get peppered by many pellets and the more pellets you get hit by the more, more of an impulse that's generated meaning your camera is going to shake more however if you walk up to the shotgun and get shot, shot point blank suddenly you get knocked down and now you have a chance to uh, shoot your enemy when you're in the field battle you're going to be shot by rockets of course we've got god mode in this instance so when you get hit by the rockets you kind of like fly sideways so what I'm going to do next is set up the force reactions to always play a knockdown whenever I'm shot by a pistol. So we see the most accurate representation of being blasted by a shotgun. What this big green square is for is for testing our force reactions. So for example, if I increase the force to about 60, we're going to get a really small little nudge which will knock us down and we'll barely go anywhere. And if we up the force a bit more, we should start going about one, one and a half meters forward. So the furthest that we want you to be able to fall when you have an explosion go off behind you is about three meters. So this little yellow line helps us measure that. One of the things we want to be wary of when you're getting knocked down is when you get knocked down from a great height, what's the character going to do as he's falling? The kinds of issues that we'd be looking at would be just the general animation flow and being able to see if we got, got enough frames in each little area where it looking clunky and make sure it's smooth. As you saw there, as just as the explosion went off, my camera shaked a little bit. There's a little example of what the grenade explosion's pressure is going to do to the char character if you're not quite in the blast zone. So here's a grenade where I haven't been able to get out of the way where it affects both of us. Next up, I'm going to show you AI twitches. So once this guy knows about our little body over there. Some of the reactions that you could see, I can trigger them myself. When he's being shot, he will be hit by various things. So we've just gone to the ship hangar test level where I can spawn in any of the ships that I need to test in. So today we're going to look at the Andromeda. If I just teleport to the seat and then we go, we can get out. 
What I'm going to get this to do now is we're going to get the AI to fly my ship for me. And what we're going to see is we're going to see some... Your character's going to start leaning depending on the g-forces of the ship. So right now we're flying directly upwards. What I'm going to do now is ask a Andromeda to ram the ship. Sometimes, um, I, I feel sorry for these guys. We just keep knocking them off the screen all the time. Yes, to wrap up, I would say this release is going to be one uh, big new push on the force reactions. The knockdowns for me, especially, is a, is a, is a new feature that, that really adds a different dimension to the game. But this is by, by no means the end of it. We're going to keep iterating on it. We're going to keep adding more types of reactions, balance it. And, you know, obviously this is where a lot of player feedback is going to be useful. You know, hope you guys really enjoy what we put out there. Get your feedback back to us and, and you know, trust us to uh, keep working on it and, and, and get in it dialed in where everyone is really happy with it. So what we learned this week? Well, we learned that gas clouds can be used to make some of the areas between points of interest more interesting themselves. That it can be just as much fun building test levels for developers as it is making game levels for players. And that when the captain turns on the fasten seatbelt light, you better move around the cabin at your own risk. For Inside Star Citizen, I'm Jared Huckabee. We'll see you next week.